everyone is welcome at the home of golf on a Sunday here at the old course, except for one group, golfers. Why? It's just always been that way. Welcome to St Andrews, the home of golf. And today I'm going to be your personal tour guide for three of arguably the most famous holes in the whole of golf, the first, the 17th and the 18th of the old course. Behind me stands one of the most famous buildings in golf. It's the RNA Clubhouse. About a hundred years ago, the sea came right up to the edge of this clubhouse, but not anymore. You can see it stands proud, and right now it's actually having some work done, which is why there's scaffolding around it. It's said that in 1754, 22 male golfers got together to play for the champion of golf. And the champion of golf would win a silver golf club, which still exists within the clubhouse today. But it was in 1836 that King William IV was brought on as patron of the club, which is why they were allowed to call themselves the Royal and Ancients Golf Club. Today, of course, it's the Queen who is the patron of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club, and it's traditionally only open to members day to day, but there is one special occasion where they open the doors to public to go inside and have a look around. So if you happen to be in town on St Andrew's Day, then make sure you pop in to have a look and you can still see the original silver golf club that those 22 men played for back in 1754. The first hole, Pura, 344 metres or 376 yards long. It's a par four and it's stroke index 10. Here I am on the first one. What a sight it is. Just about every famous golfer throughout history has teed off of this very tee box. Bobby Jones, Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, Sebi Ballesteros, you name it, they've all been here. And it is one of the widest fairways in golf. No rough, no bunkers. Believe you me, you will feel just as nervous standing here as your tee shot. As you can see, the course is closed just now. And in fact, it's closed every Sunday because it's a public course. So everyone is welcome here on a Sunday to come down enjoy picnics, stroll the fairways, except for golfers. No golf here on a Sunday. It's not just amateurs that feel the nerves standing here on the first tee. Ian Baker Finch famously hit his tee shot out of bounds on the left, believe it or not, in 1995, when he was playing with his idol, Arnold Palmer. It's said that the old course wasn't designed or architecturally thought through, rather it grew out from the natural terrain that already existed here. But it's claimed that old Tom Morris worked on the greens and the landscaping around here for the second half of the 19th century. He did that for 50 pounds a year. 17 and a half holes to go as you walk down the first hole. There really is no feeling like it in the world. You can see as you just cross this bridge, the right hand side, the new second tee that they built for the opening. If you do come to play, don't worry, you won't be teeing off from that tee. Instead, you'll be teeing off behind the first green, which makes for a slightly more straightforward hole. So here we are at the first green. Let me tell you, if you've made it here in two shots and you've managed one or two putt on this green to make a par, you've had a very good start to your round. We're headed in that direction towards the 17th tee. If you do get the chance to come and play the old course, then this is the 17th tee that you're going to be playing off the road hole. But we're going to head back there to the championship tee, which is where the professionals play off during the Open. Now, each of these three holes is intimidating for its own reason. And on the 17th, it's because of the tee shot. It's totally blind. It's part of the old course hotel that abuts into the fairway. The line is apparently the tip of the apex. It's very, very misleading, this tee shot. So trust the local knowledge and hit a driver over the middle of the apex. It is a very long par four. Today, the wind's off the right, which is the prevailing wind. The main challenge here, well, it starts in the tee shot, but it does actually get trickier as we progress down the hole. So come on, let's go and take a look. Now, if you don't have a ticket to watch the open, there is one spot in town that you want to find yourself, and it's this way. The Old Course Hotel is built where the freight railway station used to be. The jigger in this white pub behind me was the station keeper's cottage. And if you find yourself with a table and a pint here during the open, well, you're probably one of the most lucky people in the whole town. A view down the 17th and the 18th like this, sun shining, it really doesn't get much better. Yeah, some pretty awkward lies, actually. This is a horrible lie. Ball way below your feet. You have to start the ball pretty far left if this was the position you ended up in. It's not as flat as it looks, the old course. It is 
flatter than probably what you anticipate, but that's Lynx Golf, isn't it? It's the traps, it's the 112 bunkers out there, it's the wind howling off the left, howling off the right, wherever it may be coming from, and it's the subtle and small undulations on the green that will catch you out. Bit, the walk towards the road, the road that this hole is named after, and of course the infamous road hole bunker, which has caught many golfers on their quest to becoming the Open Champion. I hate to say I find myself in here a few too many times, but so have many, many famous golfers over the years. Of course, David Duval in 2000 had a bit of disaster in here. You can see the finish line, the 18th tee is coming. Sometimes this bunker is known as the Sands of Nakajima because Tommy Nakajima in 1978 took four shots as well to get out of here while he was actually leading the Open. He ended up carding a nine on the hole, which sadly put his hopes of lifting the claret jug to one side. It goes without saying, if you can avoid this bunker, it really is worth it. Rather stick to the green, but make sure you don't go long of the green because behind is the infamous wall. Now we all can remember that fantastic shot of Miguel Angel Jimenez, who chipped it beautifully, magically almost, off the wall. During the open, there is a grandstand that sits behind this wall. The last open that was here, there were 6,000 people in that grandstand. So you can imagine how intimidating that is, along with all the press and the photographers taking pictures. In 1984, Tom Watson, his approach shot landed about 18 inches from the wall and he's right-handed, so he wasn't able to take a backswing. Meanwhile, on that green at the same time, Sebi Ballesteros was holding out for birdie and doing that famous victory jump. Well, whatever happened on the 17th hole, there's still one more hole to play and this is it. What a sight. It doesn't get any better than this in the game of golf. It's the 18th hole of the old course, named after old Tom Morris himself for all that he did to contribute to this beautiful game. And as you can see, it's that lovely wide fairway again, but don't be fooled. You'll be feeling pretty nervous when you come to tee off here. And it's a brave man who parks his car down the right-hand side. I've seen many a tee shot sliced off towards the Russex Hotel and actually I'm guilty of a few of those myself. The RNA Clubhouse, Hamilton Grand in the distance with that beautiful red sandstone and right here in front of me, the Swilkin Bridge. The Swilkin Bridge was built around 700 years ago, originally to let farmers get their livestock across this little burn, but today, well, it's famous for the footsteps that have walked across it. All the game's greats have been here and it's impossible not to walk across and relive some of those moments, like in 2005 when Jack Nicholas waved goodbye, his final appearance in the Open with an emotional Tom Watson. But today visitors travel from far and wide, even if they're not coming here to play golf, but to get that iconic photograph looking back towards the town. So once you pick your tee shot off the 18th, you can enjoy the stroll. Some of the most famous clubhouse out the right hand side of the view, which you can see just behind me. And it said in 1908, that's actually where old Tom Morris passed away. But his impact on not only this golf course, but the game of golf worldwide will never be forgotten. He said he was most proud of the 18th green. And that's where we're headed to now. just there is the Brussex Hotel which is where Arnold Palmer loved to stay whenever he came to St Andrews. Jack Nicholas preferring to stay further out of town at the Rufflitz Hotel. It's certainly not short of lovely places to stay around here. It was the rise and elevation that old Tom Morris said he was most proud of about this green but it's perhaps what comes before the green that this hole is most infamous for and that is the Valley of Sin. During the excavation process bodies that had died during the plague were uncovered. Now of course many of the townspeople thought that the excavation should come to a pause but not old Tom Morris, he was determined to get the golf course finished which they did but the name the Valley of Sin was born and some of the greatest moments in golfing history have taken place here. In 1990 Nick Faldo holding a pitch shot to close for a 67 in his opening round of the Open which he of course went on to win and in 1995 probably most famous of all Constantina Rocca duffing a chip into the valley but following that up much to John Daly's disbelief in the wings with the most monumental putt that got him into a playoff so valley of sin for some but certainly not for the spectators that have been here to witness some of these moments 
that concludes our tour of the 1st, the 17th and the 18th of the old course. If you do come to St Andrews and you're not one of the lucky ones whose name gets drawn out the ballot, then don't worry, leave the clubs to one side and instead come down and enjoy a stroll on the old links. Walk through golf's history and imagine what drama is yet to unfold here.